Hi, I'm Holly and I'm the executive pastor of Embrace Church. So a few months ago, this, this friend of mine approached me and he asked me if I'd be willing to volunteer at this local place in our community. I never really thought about serving there before, but I did love this place and I loved the people that it served. So I didn't have to think about it for very long. I was like, sure, I'm in, just tell me what to do. And so he laid out all the necessary steps that I needed to take. And, and as I took those steps, I'm not gonna lie, I was like, I am going to crush this. I mean, these people are going to love me. I'm gonna be the best volunteer they've ever had. And so I finished all my paperwork and I waited and I waited and a few weeks went by and I didn't hear anything. So I was like, you know what? I should call my friend and just double check. You know, surely they want me to get rolling soon. And so I called my friend and he says, yeah, about that. They decided that they would rather not have you volunteer and they're actually gonna keep looking for people that they think will be a better match for them. Wait a minute. Did I just get fired from a volunteer position? And one that you approached me and asked me to do? Okay, here's the thing. It is, it's, it's one thing to get fired from a paid job, but to get fired from a volunteer position, I mean, they have to really not want you. And you know, I can laugh about that day now, but man, that really stung. Rejection does that. Rejection hurts. And you know, in today's world, rejection is something that many of us face daily. You know, don't you think there was just this ignorant bliss before smartphones and social media? I mean, sure, we knew that we were being left out sometimes, but but we didn't get our we didn't get it rubbed in our face. Like we knew it was happening, but we weren't exactly sure of the details. We didn't have to face it daily. But nowadays with, with social media, I mean, you know exactly when everybody else was invited to the party and you weren't. You, you, you feel rejection sometimes when no one responds to, to your message on the group text thread. Or maybe it's a little more subtle and, and you post something and the one person that you want so badly to see your post and comment doesn't even like it. You see, rejection is a constant companion for many of us daily, and it hurts. And do you know that there is a reason why rejection hurts? Do you know that according to psychology today, that, that this, the, our brain, okay, the same pathways in our brain that are activated when we feel physical pain are actually activated as well when we feel rejection. That's why it hurts. I mean, rejection is doing to your heart the exact same thing that breaking your ankle would do to your leg. It physically causes pain and even more so than physical pain, do you know that you can relive rejection pain? Think about it this way. So I broke my arm uh, almost a year ago, okay? And while I can recall the events of the accident, when I think about that day, it doesn't cause my arm to physically hurt anymore. My arm is healed, it's fine. But when I share the story about getting rejected from a volunteer position, I physically feel the same feelings I felt on the day it happened. I feel embarrassed, I feel shame, and I feel rejection. Rejection pain can live on and on and on. And that's because our brains prioritize rejection over physical pain. And maybe your pain of rejection, maybe you experience that more than social media could ever cause. Maybe you experience that on a daily basis when your significant other treats you more like a nuisance than a partner. Or maybe you felt it your whole life because you've wanted your father to care enough to be a part of your life, to be involved, and he never has. And yet the mere mention of his name causes you to feel nothing but rejection. I wanna share with you today just a few things that we can put into practice that will help rejection not sting quite so bad. Now we can't limit, or we can't stop the pain of rejection, but we can limit its sting on us. And so I wanna share some things that can help with that. Grab a pen if you have one or take some notes in your phone. I'm gonna go through these quickly. The first thing 
that we can do is to limit their death. You see, my husband, Chris, and Jesus, they, they, they have access to parts of me that nobody else has access to, to parts of my soul that I will not open up to anyone else. And that's because in the, in the example of my husband, Chris has been my husband for 21 years. And so he's proven that come hell or high water, he is going to stick by me. And so because of that, he has full access to speak into and to hear what's going on in the depths of my soul. But see, then I have friends and I have, I have coworkers that I love dearly, but they don't have the same access. They don't get to go quite that deep. And you know, the lady that I'm going out to lunch with tomorrow, that's halfway interested in a friendship, but fully interested in a business deal, she does not get to go as deep as my friends and coworkers get to go. I'm going to limit her depth. And you see, in today's world, everybody has access to us, but they do not get to control how deep their words go, how deep their actions go into your soul. You get to control that and limit their depth. The second thing that we can do to help rejection not sting, not sting quite so bad, that's a hard sentence to say, but the second thing we can do to limit that sting is to quiet our inner critic. You see, rejection magnifies the things about ourselves that we don't like. I mean, it attaches to our own insecurity. So have you ever told yourself, I didn't get invited because I'm not stylish enough or, or I'm not rich enough? Or, or maybe have you told yourself, I didn't get that promotion because I'm just too talkative. Stop doing that. Stop doing that. Rejection is painful enough. Don't let your own insecurities piggyback on top of rejection's pain. The third thing that we can do is just don't act. Don't act, stay still, pause. Do you know that rejection actually uh, temporarily decreases our IQ and limits our ability to make wise decisions? Our decision-making is hampered when we are feeling rejection. And so that's why you don't want to send that text or you don't want to comment on that post. Go to sleep, sleep on it, take a moment, run it through a friend, but don't act. I mean, do you really want to know why he broke up with you? Oftentimes those answers just add further insult to injury. So pause and don't act. The fourth thing that we can do is find our flock. Find our flock. Do you remember the story of the ugly duckling? It's a story that is filled with rejection. But see, in the end, the ugly duckling find out, finds out that he's actually not ugly, right? He just was in the wrong flock. You know, I remember one time recently, we were uh, Chris and I were sitting on the couch watching TV one night, and I was just scrolling social media, and I saw some of our friends all hanging out. I saw them on about 10 different feeds, and it hurt my feelings. I felt rejected because we didn't get invited. And so I said to Chris, wow, I guess they just didn't want us there. And he took my phone from me. He goes, let me see that. And he took my phone, and he looked at it, and he started laughing, and he said, come on, Holly, you know that if they would have invited you, you wouldn't even have gone. And I said, now listen, that is beside the point. I just wanted to be invited. Have you ever done that? Have you ever found yourself wanting so hard to be a part of a flock or a group of friends and you actually realize you don't really even like that group? Some of us are missing out on fully enjoying our own flock because we are begging to be a part of the wrong flock for us. Find your flock, enjoy your flock, find your people and enjoy them. The final thing that we could do is focus on our calling. Jesus himself experienced more rejection than most any of us could possibly endure. He was rejected by his family. He was rejected by his church leaders. He was rejected by his best friends and he was rejected by his own father. I mean, that is a lot of rejection. But you know that every single time Jesus was rejected, he turned it right around and he focused immediately on his calling. He did not let any rejection detour him from what he came to do. He focused on his calling and that's what we need to do. See, rejection will never change our calling. In our world, it needs you. There are thousands of people in this world 
that would love to invite you to their party, that would love to post a picture of you and them together on their feed. Our world needs you. And if we are going to fulfill our calling, we need to focus not on the people that have turned us away, but on the people who love us, the people who have chosen us. See, so many of us are missing what we called to do because we are not focusing on the ones who want to love us. We are focusing on the ones who don't want us. And who pays the price? Our own self-worth and the people that did choose us. They pay a price because our eyes are not on what we can do for them. Our eyes are on the ones who rejected us. And I just want to encourage all of us in 2021, let's not give more soul space to the people who rejected us than to those who didn't. They need you. They love you. Find your people. Relish in the fact that God has chosen you. He has given you a calling. You have a flock that has chosen you. And they need you.